So in lifting, there are all kinds of different ways to do bench presses. And today, we're gonna go over how to do board pressing and how to do it right. So as you can see, these are the three major boards that are used for pressing. You have a one board, which means it's one thick. You have a two board, which means it's two thick. And then you have a three board, which means it's three thick. Now obviously, these different boards are going to have different ranges of motion, but they all share one similar thing, and that's how you use them. So if I'm gonna use the one board, now a lot of reasons I would use a one board is because my sticking point is just basically right off my chest, right? So if I'm getting on a max effort bench press and I get it off my chest, but I'm sticking anywhere from one to two inches off, then this board is gonna train that exact sticking point. But the other reason that you would use these boards is based on shoulder pain. So if I have, say, a, a wonky shoulder that's not feeling very good and full range of motion bench pressing tends to agitate it, this is a way for me to bench press without actually having to go full range of motion because of shoulder or joint pain. So you find that the, the board pressing allows people that have maybe a shoulder tweak or something of that nature, an issue, they're still able and allowed to press. But there are some key points that you need to utilize. One, on the board press, you need to make sure that your hands tend to be a little narrower than normal. Why? Because you're already limiting the range of motion. So if you go wider and add a board press, you're shortening the range of motion by a ton. So. What we would normally do is have a partner holding the board. So as you can see, this is gonna make me one and a half inches thicker. So now on a board press, usually when I'm maxing, my thumb beds are on the knurling. I mean, this is a pretty narrow bench. Now if I was maxing, I'd be more out here if it was a full range of motion bench. But what I find is that if I shorten the range of motion with a board, I'll lengthen the range of motion by moving my hands in and making my triceps strong. The next thing that it shares with a normal bench is the hand squeeze. So I'm still squeezing my hands as tight as I can. Now when I go down to touch the actual board, this is where you see a lot of people mess this up. When you come down and touch the board, you actually wanna come down in control fashion and pause on the board. So I like to use board pressing as a pausing press. So you don't wanna come down and bounce it off the board. You actually wanna come down, touch and pause and then press. Another great way to make sure that you're building maximal muscle and strength is to slow down the eccentric on a board press because as you know, we're already shortening the range of motion. So now if I say one, two, three, four, five, pause, press, now I have increased time under tension because I have decreased range under motion. So if you have injured shoulders, which a lot of us do it from time to time, then do slower eccentrics when you shorten the range of motion, i.e. at a board press. Sure. So now the two board is gonna be obviously twice as thick as the one board, and that's gonna cause even shorter range of motion. So same rules apply as the last time, which is we are going to slow the eccentric phase we are going to pause on the board. Those things are going to allow a shortened range of motion exercise to have just as much potency as a full range of motion exercise. So the two board, as we lay down, obviously you can see it's twice as thick. Then I'm gonna have my finger nail beds on where the knurling starts. And then I'm gonna go down to a two board. So down, pause, press. What I like about the boards at this height, especially the two board, I like that I can really teach my elbows to tuck right before I touch. So I'm gonna go down in a neutral position, keeping everything tight, and then right before I touch, I'll turn my elbows in a little bit. And then when I press, I'll release the elbow pressure and let them kick out slightly. This allows me to learn each position with each board because you're doing different things at different heights. And I know that sounds confusing at first, but it becomes second nature after a while. So on a two board, what I'm teaching my body to do is tuck right before I touch that two board. So I'm actually pulling my elbows in this way, just a little bit, it doesn't have to be extreme. You actually don't even really need to see it too much, you just need to feel it. That automatically makes my hands have to squeeze tighter, it keeps my, as you can see, it raises my chest. Well, if I learn to do this in different sections, i.e. a one board, a two board, a three board, then my pressing position will be enhanced, therefore increase the amount of strength I have. Okay, so the three board is obviously three times thicker than the one board. And what I like to use on the three board is I like to do tempos both on the eccentric and concentric, meaning on the way down and on the way up, I'm gonna slow it down. Why? 
Because if I'm doing max effort bench pressing, when I'm coming up off the, the position that this board is going to apply, the weight's gonna be slowed down tremendously in a max effort exercise. Meaning that if I put this board on me and I press it fast, when will I be moving it fast off of this far off my chest? The answer is this becomes a grind. So the third, the three board is the third position that I like to train with boards because by this time the weight has slowed down in a max effort attempt, therefore teaching me to grind. So on a three board, I use tempos both on the eccentric and concentric. So you'll see that this board makes me nearly twice as thick, fairly narrow grip, and then I'm gonna take it out and you'll see I'll do a one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So then that way, when this board is gone and I'm benching a maximum weight, so now I'm back out at my strongest position. When I get down here and I blast it, bang, and I get here, I'm used to having to grind it out, okay? So if I'm blasting off that three board, it's not gonna help me. What I need help with is I blasted it, it's sticking, and I need that grinding power. So on the three board, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And now when that bar slows here, I'm used to that, and I can crawl right underneath it and lock it out. So those are the three major ways you would use the different heights of bench pressing boards and why you would use them in their advantages. Now obviously if you use boards all the time and you decrease the range of motion too much, you're gonna notice that your full range of motion bench press will suffer. The key is using these sporadically and every once in a while, and I like to use these for reps after I've done my core lift. So I don't shorten the range of motion on the bench press unless my shoulder hurts or unless I'm working on a particular position to master either on the way up or on the way down.